after talking to uh, uh, a coach or two about the magic number for them was 500, 500 running plays in a season. Okay. Okay. Um, but that was going back 10, 15 years. Um, I'm not saying teams don't do it. A couple of years ago, Jacksonville and Minnesota did it. Both got to, yeah. to the conference championship game that year, by the way. Again, that includes kneel downs, includes reverses, includes quarterback sneaks. It's running plays in general. You don't, you know, say this and that and this and that. But it's you being able to dictate the tempo and frustrate the team. I, I, I can't tell you how many players and coaches have t- always told me this. There is nothing more demoralizing to a defense than a team in the fourth quarter running a football. The defense knows it, and the offense knows it, and the defense is helpless to stop it. That's beautiful to my ears. It's just old school football. It, it just, it's the, the way the game, honestly, is just meant to be played at its core. Just physical well, let's, man-to-man let's combat. Here. Right. Let's be let's let's be honest here, okay? And I've thought yeah. about this a lot in the last couple of years. Um, the real first season of significant rule changes in the NFL was 1978. Okay, in 1976 right. and 77, there were a record amount of shutouts. A lot of that had to do with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being a first and second for team. They were awful, um, but all that had really grounded down. Um, in 78, they opened up uh, no contact beyond, beyond five yards. Offensive linemen were allowed to extend their orange pass blocking. A couple of other tweaks as well. Oh, they changed the they, – they changed the – whoever hit, touches the ball, it doesn't have to – if it's an offensive player, it doesn't have to touch a defensive player next to the offensive player. Remember the immaculate reception controversy? And so yep. – Okay. And then we start to see Hail Marys and tip passes and stuff. That all changed in 1978. But over the last 40 years, how many times have you seen the NFL go back and kind of tweak or change the rules a little more? Many times, right? Yep, yeah. especially after yeah. 14 with the best caught it, no catch or catch. Oh, and yeah, that was a big Right, and nine times out of ten, it's the favorite what side of the ball, the offense or the defense? Offense, always offense. Right. offense. And it occurred to me over the last couple of years, do you know why they keep on changing for the offense? Why is that, Russell? Because the defense catches up faster than people realize. Wow. See, that doesn't amaze me, but it's cool to hear somebody actually say it. That means Yeah, I mean, think about football. it. Why are they tweaking it again? Okay? Well, because someone did their homework. Okay? Are, are we, we actually are we actually so kind of saying here that the the defensive players may may not be getting credit for being the smarter players on the field then? Uh, no, I'm not saying that at all. I, so, I, oh, I, I'm just I, I was I'm just trying to be facetious, I guess. No, I, well, I love when you see things, Patricia, but um, I think it's I'm talking about defensive coaching staff, okay, and the work they're able to do. And the like film study the world. and the breakdown and all that. I think that's the thing that's fascinating to me. I mean, this game is – and listen, this game has changed a lot just in the last couple of years. You know, even so much of, you know, how teams are scouting quarterbacks now, okay? I mean, 20 years ago, you probably would have never seen Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray as first overall picks. Think about it. Oh, God, oh, no. Oh, definitely. No, yeah. no, yeah. So that that aspect, this game is constantly evolving. But when push comes to shove, you better have a running game and you better have some defense. And think about it. We really saw that the final month of the season, okay? For everybody yeah. thinking we were going to have a 54-51 Super Bowl, we wound up having the lowest scoring Super Bowl in history, 16 total points. And it was boring. I'm sorry. Like, right. as much as right. I love football, right. that was just boring. It was boring for a lot of people, correct? Yeah, and I and I, I love old school kidding. football. They're just it's just it just it was so slow grinded out. Like I feel like even no when kidding. I turn on old tape I got more action than what I fought, saw in that Super Bowl. And maybe it was just me mm-hmm. and my biases, but No, no, I under I understand all that. And you understand that that was probably the general consensus among fans, correct? Correct, yeah. 
So, oh my goodness, that was really boring. Are we going to have to change something again? Oh, you're good, Russell. You're very good. Well, I just, it, it's just common sense. I, listen, I've done this for a long time. Um, I've learned a lot of football watching. I've also watched football with some of the greatest players, coaches, and general managers in this game. Okay? And I asked a lot of questions. And um, that's how I learned football. Do you that's think, right. Russell, that anything has anything to do with the possible player walkout soon? Because I've been reading that today from Demory Smith that he's warning agents for a work stoppage. And do you think they're trying to stop it to be able to change the rules again? No, I don't think that has anything to do with it at all. Okay. No, no, I was no. just curious. Those are two totally separate entities. The competition committee, committee would be something totally different. Um, and, and look, okay. the NFL can be its own worst enemy. Okay. Um, how many times have we seen, probably like in the last 10 years, oh, Brett Favre did hit the ball in overtime in the NFC title game. Remember? Uh, yeah, I remember. Way to yeah. rub it in. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> So what did what did they do the following year? Change the rules. They changed the overtime rules. That was when he was with the Vikings, Dave. With the right. kick goal. The, I know, but I'm thinking goal. of the 07 NFC Championship. No, no, no. No, no he no, threw no. the pick in overtime that screwed him yeah. that year. Right. I know. Last year, last year, there was a lot of talk about the the bad call, and it was a bad call in the same. Yeah. Rams game, correct? Right. Okay, so what did they do this offseason? Changed and made no, the dumbest rules. rule they've what ever made in the history of the game. I'm sorry. Changed the, changed the rules again. The, the NFL Saints pushed for that rule so much, I think that's going to come back to bite them in the butt this year, though. I think it's going to be karma. A nightmare. I think, I think it's think a it nightmare. Will, I think there will be something that comes up that winds up being a fly in the ointment in terms of that rule. Okay, because every here's what I've noticed. When they do change the rules, something comes up that no one thought of. Yeah, that is true. That is a very true yeah. observation. Something comes up. Oh, well, we didn't think of that. Except Bill Belichick, he probably thought of it. And it's had figured out a way he to of everything. That's advantage. the problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I, we've gotten to the point, too, where it's like, you can still not like the Patriots, but dang it, they're, they've earned the respect despite Spygate and all the other things. I mean, we can use that as some sort of judge when we're judging things, but at the end of the day, they still have continued to win over and over and over and over again. And at some point, you just got to respect it. You don't have to like it, but you got to respect it. Well, listen, there are 32 fan bases. So 31 of them are not going to like it, okay? But they haven't had a losing season since 2000. The last time they won less than 10 games was 2002. Okay? They've been in the playoffs 10 years in a row, which has never been done in NFL history. They've won 10 straight division titles. The old record was seven. Okay? They just became the third team to go to three straight Super Bowls. The Dolphins did it from 71 to 73. The Bills did it from 90 to 93. Okay? So if they would – think about this. If they win the Super Bowl this year, they would tie the record for most consecutive Super Bowls. They would surpass the record of most Super Bowl wins. Of course, they could get to the Super Bowl and lose and set a new Super Bowl record for losses because them and the Broncos have both lost five Super Bowls. What I'm saying is, it kind of reminds me, remember when the Yankees blew the 3 nothing lead to the Red Sox? Yeah. In yep. yeah. I wasn't surprised by that. You know why? Because when you're in the playoffs, as much as the New York Yankees, everything is liable to happen to you. You're going to see all which scenarios. Well, which includes the Patriots being a 16-0 and team and losing the Super Bowl. If you're in that many Super Bowls and you're in the playoffs that often, you're probably going to have something happen to you that you weren't expecting. 
That's you know that's actually an angle on an argument that I can respect much more than all the other crap I've heard from a lot of the other people <laughs> out there. With with national shows making big money, Russell, why don't you have a national show? You're much smarter than some of these guys out there. Yeah, we need to we need to get you on national TV. You're you're, you're too smart for your own I, good. I just want to be your assistant, Russell. That's it. I just want to be your wanna, assistant. Just, just give else. me a job somewhere. I'll get your donuts and pay me well. I'll be fine. <laughs> Hey, uh, first off, I have an amazing co-founder named Julie Boyd. Julie noted, understood DFG. That's a and she, shame. And we wish her very well because we understand she is not feeling well. So, yeah. Get better, gonna, Julie, when you John here. We're hoping to come back on. And, and listen, we've had a great time doing the podcast. Um, it was something we just kind of thought of. And uh, before we knew it, we were having, you know, Chris Mortensen and John Clayton and John McLean and Ed Werder and, um, you know, take your pick. You know, when you, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to do this for a long time and know a lot of people in the industry who I've worked with and some of them even like me. So, um, you know, we've had a great time talking football with them and so on. And I, what do you mean some I, of them type kind of I like you? Who doesn't <laughs> like you? I want to know. Cause you know, I, I've known you for now 40 <laughs> minutes now drunk. officially. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I don't understand how you. People, I can tell you the people sometimes who don't like me. The people whose teams didn't win championships from 1920 to 1965. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, guys out no, there no. that. Oh. Do you oh, understand the point I'm making? Yes, I, mean, I do. Yeah, I, I see it. That was yeah, awesome. I recognize those championships. Those other people don't recognize those championships. Okay, Russ, I got you. I got a question for you before we get off it. Okay, got we got a, three minutes, I got a guys. Type question. Okay. All right. For, for the OTAs and training camp coming up, who would you see the chances of getting cut the most, depending on the position that was drafted and everything of basically the depth at the position? Is it Jimmy Graham? Is it Brian Bulaga? Or is it Mike Daniels? Or Lane Taylor? Oh. Oh boy, boy, that's a that's a that's a loaded question. Um, you know, boy, that that's that's tough. That's really tough. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen with injuries. You never know how much playing time these guys or action they're going to see during the OTAs. Um, you know, for the sake of the Packers and their offensive line, which you know just didn't perform all that well last year, I would hope. Oh God, that no, we got beat up. No, exactly, which is why they brought in Billy Turner, I think. Okay, Cole Madison um, back too. Used, the fifth round draft pick. And they also, right, they also used the second round pick uh, on an offensive line. There. L. So, Jenkins, um, yes. You, you've got a. This is a battle of attrition. If, you know, you think about what the Patriots go back to the Patriots for a year ago. Remember, they drafted uh-huh. like nine guys, and I think six of them didn't play for them at all last year. Okay. Nope. They did not. So they've got those guys coming back. Um, I'd be, I, I, listen, I, I think Jimmy Graham is still a very, very viable player. Um, you know, he's been a little, he's been, listen, he's been a little hot and cold since he left um, New Orleans. But the last two years he was in Seattle, after he came back from that knee injury, the first year he was there, he was highly productive. So I think That's he was a red show. He was a red zone machine. Yeah, and I think sometimes we forget how long it takes people to recover sometimes, okay? Um, Case in point, uh, Deshaun Watson last year. And and by the way, it also depends on when you get hurt, too, okay? Yep. Um, Carson Wentz Wentz got hurt in December 2016. I wasn't surprised that he was as – tentative as he was last year when he did play. He didn't look himself. Um, one of the most fascinating, listen, Andrew Luck was comeback player of the year last year, okay? Three weeks into the season, he couldn't throw a Hail Mary pass. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, they were they were playing the Eagles in Philadelphia. He couldn't throw a Hail Mary. Jacoby Brissett had to come in. It all depends on how the body responds. So, I, I I wish I could give you a better answer on who's likely to get cut. I just do you think Mike Daniels will get cut? 
Is that, is, that'd huh? be my main one. Damn, All Daniel right, might guys. Be cut, in my opinion. We appreciate you very much, Russell. We got a few seconds left. We want to say thank, thank you, you very Russell. much, and we will get you back on the show.